And we're on the air. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the show that never spoils, unlike spoiled milk. This is the sports box. The only thing that matters. It's right here. I am Mike Galetta, a.k.a. Have to Mike, along with my soon-to-be father, Brian, the Ranger Tar. Brian, how are you today? Phenomenal, sir. How are you? Oh, see, I got you. You got to yeah, talk about that. You got that going. Attaboy. Wait, give me a year. Then let then talk to <laughs> Anyway, today, congratulations. Anyway, today we are going to back at our NFL 32 NFL teams. Today we head out to the West to talk to a guy from, well, not from, but about his team, the Denver Broncos. Let's bring him on the show, Brian. Let's talk to Will. Okay. Will Pitt. Hey, that a boy. Yeah, boy. Name that I wanted you to say it. Oh, ah, this guy geez. never gets anything. Will, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How you doing, guys? Oh, man, we're doing fabulous. Glorious, brother. Well, my my partner's sleeping over here. He talks about I'm taking Viking. I have anyway. no idea what goes on in this show. <sighs> anyway. And we don't rehearse it. It's a privilege to be on the show. Thank you so much. Oh, it's it, 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 Oh. Will, it's our pleasure, pal. All right, Brian, stab me. Let's talk Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos, uh, nine and seven in their Super Bowl defense season. Third place in the AFC West. They did not return to the postseason. Uh, offensively, they did struggle. They were 27th overall in the league, the 27th best rush attack, the 21st attack through the air. Uh, Trevor Simeon was a surprise out of camp, won the quarterback job over Paxton Lynch, 3,400 yards, 18 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Uh, rookie Devontae Booker led the team in rushing with 600 yards and four touchdowns. C.J. Anderson, as you fancy players know, got injured early on in the season. Booker took over from there. But their, their wide receivers were fantastic. Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, both over a thousand yards apiece. Both both had five touchdowns. But really, after that, there wasn't anything else through the air uh, for Denver. Their defense was just fantastic, as it always is. The fourth overall defense in the NFL. But you may be surprised to know that they finished 28th against the run. They really did struggle to stop the run. But numero uno, number one through the air. Well, Vaughn Miller can't make every tackle. That's true. So. Drafted. Garrett Bowles, offensive tackle out of Utah with a 20th overall pick. Yep. And, Will, I want to start a quarterback. You know, I think Simeon was a big surprise last year yep. that he won that job over Paxton Lynch. You know, everybody's like, oh, John Elway picking Paxton Lynch. He's going to be the next guy. How surprised were you, and still are, that Paxton Lynch can't overtake the job from Trevor Simeon? Well, you see, I just, I just think Simeon came in really prepared. I mean, ultimately prepared. Far beyond my expectations, uh, me being a Broncos fan, I did, you know, have high hopes for Paxton Lynch. I believe he would get up off the ground and get off the ground early. Uh, it didn't happen that way, and you guys see how things culminated. Um, but Trevor Simeon, I have to admit, I am I am extra pleased with him. Uh, he could be he could be far more along. But I, overall, I must say, I, I am I, I am very pleased with them. And yeah, Brian talked about the quarterbacks. I'm going to go to the the the, uh, the skill positions, the running back and the wide receivers. Talk about this running back position with Denver. It just seems like every year they, they plug a guy in there and he does his job. This year they pick up Jamal Charles, take a chance on him. They do have Stephen Ridley in there. Um, you know, it's a plug and play offense. But my thing is the wide receivers. You talk about Demarius Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders. The big talking camp though is Isaiah McKenzie. And you probably never heard that much, but here comes a rookie um, to the Denver Broncos out of Georgia. I hear this kid really, really looks good and could crack the lineup. Now, what do you think? Well, just uh, great news to you. We did let Steve Ridley go earlier today. Yep. Uh, you know, I must say good written. <laughs> and, uh, he didn't do anything. But as far as the kid goes, I, I see a lot of promise. Yep. You know, but Carlos Henderson, come on, we got to be real. As far as the backfield is, we are pretty stacked. Uh, Jamal Charles, we see how injury played his career has been. Mm -hmm. uh, every year from a fantasy aspect, you know, we get high hopes on him. In reality, it just doesn't come to fruition. Devontae Booker, you know, Maybe to my demise, hopefully not. I took a chance on drafting him. I got laughed at. <laughs> uh, C.J. Anderson is supposed to be. Now, with, with the guy who drafted him, with, with, you know, all I heard from the crowd was, oh, nice pick, nice pick. Now, C.J., C.J., I mean, he's been efficient. I, I didn't really even think he was going to flourish like, like, he, like he has done. But 
especially when Monte Ball was in the mix. Yes, yes. Look, as far as the stable of running backs, so you guys know our history in Denver, okay? Mm -hmm. We produce with the running backs. We don't even have the line that the Dallas Cowboys have. But when it comes to running backs, we produce a stable. So it does not matter who we had to fall off to. We are going to get the job done. So you put any anybody's name in the slot, and we can make it happen. Well, you, you brought up the line, Will, and it's an excellent point. You know, it looks like they're projected to have three new starters over the team from last year. When you look at Menelik Watson from Oakland, Ron Leary coming over from Dallas, and they drafted Garrett Bowles to play left tackle. So, you know, the, the question with this Denver offense was not just the quarterback, but their offensive line. I think they've done a nice job of doing their best to address that hole. What do you think? Definitely. Definitely. You hit it right on the point. We did the job to address that hole. Garrett Bowles addressed that hole. Garrett Bowles addressed that hole. He's going to be an immediate starter. He's going to make an immediate impact, and that's what we needed. Now, you see on the defensive side, you see what we have. Now, you know just like I know, the, the, the Baltimore Ravens, they will be the prototype mm -hmm. of a uh, uh, team that won the Super Bowl strictly off the of defense. You know how it could be done. So, if you could facilitate that just somehow and have that offense come into play and just make something happen, you can be successful. We have that defense. We have to do that shutdown quarter. Come on, man. We have everything in play from our Super Bowl one. So if everything can just fall into place, there's no telling what can happen. Now, it could go either way, but everybody knows what we stand for, the Denver Broncos. So I will, love, I love, I love so, Will's passion. So Will, I gotta disagree with you. If Brian Atar was in the backfield for Denver, they would you guys would struggle. But anyway, that's all I that got a thousand yards. I don't know about that. I'll just keep running. I mean, until yeah, I got the thousand. I don't know about that. Anyway, we're gonna talk about the defensive side of the ball, and you know, you obviously the, the name players are Vaughn Miller, uh, Brandon Marshall back there, uh, do a good job for Denver. But I am really surprised in the secondary. You got guys like Chris Harris back there, uh, Darian Stewart, T.J. Ward, which is fine, but. I really thought before this season started, Akeem Talib would be added there. Here's a guy who, you know, been fighting some off off season, uh, you know, issues. Was a bad dude when he was with the Buccaneers. Had problems in, with New England. I, are you surprised he's still on this team? Well, some of the reports that were coming out, you know, that were circulating, and with him getting shot now. You know, getting shot, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. A lot of people really can't delve into that and they can't give a personal experience. Me, I can't because I was shot myself. But that's another story for another day. Now, just recovering, personally, it took me over 10 months to recover from my gunshots. Now, he, you know, it, obviously he got shot in, in a, a, a lower extremity, which was different from, what, you know, what, what I was affected by. But... You have, to, you have to know that that is what he needs to excel on the field. So that will hinder him. So when I got the news of that, that you know, of what happened to him, I automatically thought, okay, you know, they, they're right now, you know, there's a setback. And if, you know, we're talking business-wise, you know, now I'm not there firsthand, but being a fan, I, you know, I might want to look in other directions, you know, looking at his history, his age, everything, put them in, in the place and see what he's about off the field, on the field, whatever. But, yeah, ultimately I was surprised that they did keep him. Now, it, it'll be, you know, left to see what he has left to prove. You know, it, it seems he's still sort of highly touted, but that's only words that, you know, Wordplay that you know we have to see action. We have to see action now. Right. But right. you know, we're talking to Will Pitt, our Denver Broncos affiliate for the Sports Box. So, you know, the, the defense, which obviously everybody knows Denver for, it, it's not just their secondary. You know, Von Miller is one of the best defensive players in the league. I think that goes without saying. 13 and a half sacks last year, but he's, he needs a little bit of help, too. Is, is there a guy on this Denver defense that nobody's really talking about that could be uh, another difference maker, that so it's not all on Vaughn's shoulders to lead this whole thing going forward? Well, 
you know, they're a cohesive unit. So you can't put it on one person, one person's shoulder. I mean, you got Vine, you got Derek Wolf, you got, you know, Shane Ray, Chris Harris, Tali, Brandon Marshall, Todd Davies, TJ Ward, the list goes on and on and on. Now, the, the way you the, develop players is to, to, to come up behind these veterans and find out mm-hmm. what it is to be a defensive star. And you guys see, for, for, for the past, for, you know, few years, we have been that defense. And beyond those few years, we have been competitive for that defense. But you must say, these past two years, we've been that defense, okay? So any name you put on that slate, that's what I'm saying. Anybody's name is just like the Patriots. Either as much as I really, you know, have, you know, certain feelings for the Patriots, I have to call a spade a spade. They are a machine. And it does not matter whose name is on the back of the jersey. That's uh-huh. what we all have to understand. And it's different clubs because a lot of clubs don't focus on an individual or certain individuals, whereas it's team work. Just like in basketball, certain teams are teams where they rely on certain individuals and you have, you know, different outcomes. But the Denver Broncos, you know, what our signature, we're going to bring that defense, okay? We're going to bring that defense. Right now, that's what, that's what we're focused on. You know, we will attend Super Bowls regularly, okay? We know how to do it. So it doesn't matter what side of the ball you guys want to talk about, the offense or the defense, and you can keep on, you need, we can keep on naming names, names and names and names and names. There's a, there are many names and role players, okay? But we can go like Game of Thrones and all of you with the same. Listen, <laughs> we are a unit. We are going to get things done regardless of how it's going to be and who's going to do it. So, Will, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the schedule a little bit. I like to look at what's called Murder's Row, where there's three or four games where the team is going to struggle a little bit, or we're going to have a rough stretch. Oh and, man! And, and see, I, I'm analyzing schedule so much. That there, there's you know, especially those first four games. Yeah, that, that, that's like a rough patch. You know? it, it is, but I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you. Let's talk about that, please. <laughs> <laughs> Am I on the show? Will's the man. Will's the man. I'm, I'm going to talk about week 10 when they are home against New England on a Sunday night game, and then they play the Cincinnati Bengals. They are off to Oakland, and with that in mind, playing Oakland is going to be a very tough game in Oakland, and then you're off to Miami going cross country. That could be a trap game for them. So that stretch of four right there is going to be a little bit difficult for Denver down the stretch. Nah, well, you know, here's my prediction, all right? I already got the prediction. Now, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'll get to that quickly. I'll get to that real I'll focus on that, but I really want to focus on the whole schedule. Hopefully I can go down, I can let you guys know, you know, my insight on Absolutely. each game. But if you want to talk about that stretch of games right there, I really don't see those as trap games because what you guys have to acknowledge is, the division games are very important. So, you know, it depends. You could go, you know, undefeated in the, in those division games, but most likely you, you want to split those, okay? So, I, I got us, you know, I got us winning at Kansas City on the 30th of October, and then I got us going to Philly and winning there. But, yeah, I do have us losing against New England. I have us losing against New England on the 12th. But I, come, I have this coming back, winning against Cincinnati, and then losing against Oakland, mm-hmm. honestly, because mm-hmm. I have this meeting Oakland on the 1st of October, which is the fourth game. And I would think that they would most likely have things together, you know, by then with Carr and Lynch, and, you know, everything would be in the play by then. So I would give them that game. But then Miami, I, I, I've got us winning that game. Now, I love Cutler. And Brian knows mm-hmm. that. He does. Brian knows that I have, I have mad love for Cutler, and he's one of our alumni. And I do think that they are going to excel if they can stay healthy this season. But, when they, 
you know, that day when we go down there and see them, I did not see them do it successful that day, okay? You know, I, I see us going on the street after that Oakland game. I see us winning out. I'm going to just tell you that right now. I got us winning out after that Oakland game. I don't see nobody else beating us after that because of the fact that the Jets, they're trash. Smush from that watch the show again. <laughs> and, and, and folks, you know, it's always a nice game with the Colts. It's a nice game with the Colts every year. That's what, for some reason, even if we play, play them a couple of times, it's always a nice game with the Colts. Now, Washington... Washington. Will, you know, Will, it's only it's only a twenty minute show, Will. <laughs> we love you. But it's I, only 20 I do have I do have a in Washington. Now we'll see because you know how banged up they get. Mm -hmm. You know that they have no running game, and his cousin is here. By by that time, things will be rolling for us. Okay, and then Kansas City because uh, that's the one division rival that I do think that we will beat out. I think that. We we will beat them out because their running game has been deplenished. So those last uh, five games, I see us winning after Oakland. So that's just to touch on that. Okay. Now, if you want to go on the whole schedule, we can break that down. No, we, well, here's we, the, we I mean, love here's, to, Will. Here's, what's, here's what stands out to me looking just at, at, looking at it from, from, from a, a, a high view. The schedule makers didn't do them any favors, giving them seven out of ten games on the road, going yeah. from October twenty second at at uh, L A. at all the way down to Christmas Eve at Washington. I think road games are always tougher to win. I I, I do think Denver's built uh, to to play on the road okay because their their defense is fantastic. Yep. Um, but you know we 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 see this a lot with AFC uh, West and NFC East teams are playing each other this year. It just yep. seems like their schedules they don't really have a lot of lull. It, it seems like you're always going up against a team that's yep. a it's it's a tough game. Um, what I'll ask you, Will, is this: it, it, it's it's definitely a big year for Denver coming you know coming out of that Super Bowl hangover type year. If if I had to ask you to predict a record for your Broncos, how do you think this thing ends up for them? Eleven and five. Okay, I got us losing to your Cowboys on the 17th of September. I'll take that. I got us losing to the Giants on the 15th of October, following up with another loss to the Chargers, okay? Because mm -hmm. we want to beat them opening day, so that, that will be their revenge. And then we'll lose against the Patriots, and then Oakland, like I stated. Yep. And then after yep. that, it's on. We're going to go, I see us losing five games. We will go 11 and 5 this year. Y'all can analyze everything I said, every game, and that's how it's going to play out. Well, there you that's go. What I <clears throat> There you go. You heard it here first from Will, our affiliate. Fear, fearless prediction. We That's love it. That's it. That's it. That's all the time we have for our Denver Broncos edition of the Sports Box with the NFL Preview. I want to thank our new Denver Broncos affiliate, Will Pitt, for hopping online. Will, thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, guys. You guys enjoy your evening and have a lovely holiday. We and will. I will see you in the near future. Absolutely. I can't wait for that. I'm going to need some Viking for that. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Remember, you can always get us on social media if you need to. Absolutely. This is, as you know, one of 32 NFL team previews that we're doing and priming you for an, a great 2017 NFL season. If you haven't seen your team yet, you probably could also subscribe to the Sports Box. So go ahead, click the button right at the end of the show. It's about as big as my head right over here. Subscribe to our show. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook, both at Sports Box Show. I, but trust me, you will not regret it. If you know any of your friends, even high school kids that work at CVS, Walgreens, <laughs> or any, tell them to get a hold of me. God, I need him in a divorce way. But anyway, at the Sports Box. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we don't endorse that. Yeah. Anyway, at Sports Box, the only thing that matters is absolutely right here. Thanks for watching. See ya. This episode of the Sports Box is brought to you by Mike'd Up Entertainment and DJ Mike Villardi. For all of your event planning needs, make sure you contact Mike at 609 864 5925 and tell him that you saw him on the Sports Box. One, two, three. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe.